Hi, my name is Jonah Kugan. I am a first year occupational student at Midwestern University. Um, I'm here to discuss my occupation kit, which is puzzles. Um, for the occupation itself, it falls into that category, the IADLs, specifically play. Um, the reason why it falls into play is because even though there's no specific rules, there's still an end game in creating that one image of the puzzle that you're doing. And it can also follow in the social participation um, because you can do it alongside with friends or family to help you complete the goals or to even bond together while doing it. Um, so what I'm gonna be discussing today is the two different diagnoses that may benefit from using my kit and also um, how to grade up, grade down, and even adapt. So in my kit, I just got a variety of puzzles. I ch selected about four different kind of puzzles, all different sizes, different colors. I even included tape, some paper, even some Ziploc bags. One of the two diagnoses that benefit from using the kit um, is autism. What I found coincidental before doing this puzzle is that autism is recognized by a puzzle piece. Um, it's representing the mystery and the complexity of the disorder. The spectrum is characterized by the brightly colored puzzle piece ribbon to signify the diversity of the disorder. So the way that they can benefit um, the puzzle is because it can help with problem solving. Um, there, because even though like there's a clear problem that it is a puzzle, it needs to be put together. So unlike many other situations, like people with autism face, um, puzzles are different, and there's only technically one solution. There's also memory improvement. You must um, use your memory to help complete the puzzle. Um, for example, like if you don't complete the puzzle, you can remember where you left off. Um, attention span, uh, jigsaw puzzles help build the attention span of those with autism. You have to focus on like the colors, the shape, the sizes, and there's also fine motor skills. Another benefit of using the puzzle is by carefully fitting the pieces together like this. Um, and hopefully it's correct and it helps with hand-eye coordination. Um, from going back to when I said about the social participation, it's a social skill because people with autism can benefit from doing the jigsaw puzzle with other people. It can promote like inclusion, listening and interaction. Um, sometimes you can even like instruct them by telling them what color or give me that specific piece which can help them um, identify things easier. And most of all, it helps build their confidence. It's important for them to do this on their own. So if they complete a puzzle, it'll help them boost their self-confidence and their self-esteem. So the second diagnosis that would benefit from my kit would be Alzheimer's. Um, they can also benefit with strengthening their memories, hand-eye coordination, and even just strengthening their self-confidence. Um, also, there's a study that shows that people who do jigsaw puzzles have longer lifespans with less chance of developing Alzheimer's disease, memory loss, or dementia. Um, puzzle stimulates the brain and actually wards off plagues that is the marker of Alzheimer's. Um, they even compared brains to a 75-year-old to a 25-year-old and the elderly that did do the puzzles more frequently um, did show the brain size comparable to the same age as a 25-year-old. Last thing we're going to be discussing is different ways we can adapt for my kit. So... You can do it on the table. Some people do it on floors, flat surfaces, but it can be very distracting with the type of different patterns. So to help with that, you can get a flat 
or a very plain sheet of paper and you can lay it flat so it's one bright solid color to help you focus where you're going to know where all your puzzle pieces are. Another way you can adapt is while you're doing your puzzle pieces and if you're having struggles like with memorizing which pieces can go, you can have the box right in front and you can display it and you can grab the puzzle and you can see which area it would belong to to identify where you're going and then slightly place it on there. Um, also, by the way, that these ways can be adapted mostly for people who have Alzheimer's or people who are who have autism. Um, another way that we can keep them on task is if we start off with a smaller puzzle and if we tell them to specifically grab the ones around the edge, we'll tell them to separate those first and then to form it around it, the puzzle to start it off and then kind of filling in the pieces. Um, if, for example, people who have Alzheimer's and it's hard for them to grasp because of they have arthritis or just weak, we can use tape. You can wrap the tape and then you can wrap it around your fingers like this and then put it in within your finger. And then, so if you wanna grab a puzzle, you just touch it so it just sticks and then use the other hand to take it off and then you place it. If it's too difficult for them to use this tape just to wrap it around their fingers, they can use a double-sided tape. If the texture is too much, especially for people um, who have autism, they can wear a glove and then place it on top of it so then the tactile is not bothering them. Lastly, what you can be doing is just organizing it by size. So I would not recommend for someone later um, diagnosed with Alzheimer's to do a puzzle within the 500s or do a puzzle within with one flat color. I would try to educate them by doing puzzles like to help them remember their states. You can even do specific puzzles that have numbers same thing for people who have autism. Just to make sure that they're keeping task, you can be like, where, where would California go? Where would you place Texas? So it helps them think, remember their states, and also become interactive. And again, when it comes to just organizing, um, having it in Ziploc bags, so you can have the, them separate the, all the side pieces and put them in a Ziploc bag, and then the rest of the pieces in another, so they can not one lose all the pieces, but another thing just helps them stay focused in one specific task at a time. Another way it can help benefit with social participation. One person can specifically work on one specific side and the other person can work on the other side or they can coincide and work together, which can gain like social interactions, um, independence, and they can even just boost their confidence. So there you have it, my occupational kit. I hope you find this resourceful and thank you. Bye.